Alright, so we're looking at a more expected value problems here, and just alternate ways that you can see them sometimes asked of you in the test. So, let's take a look at this question. A beekeeper gets stung on the job. The stings occur randomly, and usually just one bee at a time. What is the mean number of bee stings in a week for a beekeeper? Okay. So, they've given us some information, but they've presented it in a graph. And what I'm looking at here is, I'm guessing this should be number of stings. Sorry, it's not labeled. Number of stings and proportion. And proportion is just another fancy word that we use to talk about with probability. So when you're given the proportion of something, you also have your probability of something happening. So if we're going to do expected value, remember we need to make ourselves a little distribution table. Oops and we're going to put in the outcomes up above, what we sometimes just call x, and then the probability of that happening. So the outcomes are, um, he could have zero stings in a week, he could have one sting in a week, he could have two stings in a week, and he could have three stings in a week. And that's the way it works out here from what they've shown us. And the probabilities, because remember outcomes go on the top, probabilities are on the bottom, we can read these off the graph. So for zero stings, that's 0 0.4, 0 0.41, 0 0.42, 0 0.43, 0.45, yep, that works, so 0 0.42. So 0 0.42. For one, again reading it off the graph, we see that it's 0 0.36. And for two, reading it off the graph, 0 0.15. And for three, 0 0.07. And one thing that you can keep in the back of your head is that those are all supposed to add up to one. They should all add up to one for all the total possibilities. So if I want to find my expected value, um, again, I can think about timesing these numbers together and adding them up and doing it all by hand, um, which is not too bad. Zero times that plus one times that plus one. You got it. Or we can put it into here if you want and go from there just as another recap on the calculator so if I exit back to my list I need to put in again the outcomes go in the first column so 0, 1, 2, and 3 and here my probabilities 0 0.42 0 0.36 0 0.15 0 0.07 Again, make sure that you're still set to list 1 and list 2. If that's good, you can go back to this window and it's variable 1. Remembering that x bar gives us our mean value. So that's 0 0.87 for this mean, and the standard deviation in this case is the x sigma n, this one here, um, 0 0.912. So we could say the expected number of stings he'll get in a week is going to be 0 0.87, so that's the mean number of stings per week. And my standard deviation for that was 0 0.9. Okay, so now that we've figured out the expected value um, and our sigma, we've got a second question that's being asked here. What is the probability that a beekeeper will get stung six times in a month? Justify any probability distributions you use and state any assumptions. So that's kind of giving us a hint that we might want to think about using binomial or Poisson or normal or something. So it's helpful to look again at what the problem told us. The beekeeper gets stung on the job. The stings occur randomly and usually just one bee at a time. What is the mean number of stings? So because the stings occur randomly, and usually just one at a time, and because we're talking about discrete things, um, I'm going to guess here that we can use Poisson. And we can say because it's discrete data, the B stings occur randomly. Um, we can assume 
or we will have to assume here, the rate of stinging is constant for all the time that we're looking at. And we also have to assume um, the bees don't attack simultaneously. And that's kind of getting at the fact that um, they're independent. And it said that in the problem above, it said that they sting just one at a time, so we'd have to also have to assume here some independence. And that might be a generous assumption. I mean, if a beekeeper walks up to a beehive and kicks it, he'll probably get more than one sting because he's kicked it and it's not independent. But I guess in usual practice, we would assume here that it's independent. Okay, so we're going to use Poisson. And again, to use Poisson, you need to think about having your mean number. Um, sorry, it goes the other way. The number of events, events you're looking at and the mean number. And so what we've got from the problem above, our mean, is that we know that on average you get 0 0.87 stings in one week. And we want to talk about a month. So how many weeks would be in a month? So I'd say here assume four weeks in a month. So 0 0.87 for each week times four is going to give us 3.48 for a month. So that's going to be my lambda or my mean value. And here we're looking at beekeeper will get stung six times, so that's just a precise thing. You know, five, six, seven, for instance, it's just six, nothing else. So into my calculator, I can put in p using p precise, six comma three four point four eight. And if we do that, we should get 0 0.07599. So again, that's going into Poisson and distribution, making sure you pick PP599. P, um, and there we go. So the probability he gets six stings in a month is going to be about 7.5% or 8%. Right. So again, proportion and probability are basically the same thing. Um, read it off the graph if you need to. And if they're asking about justifying any probability that you use, you probably have some things that you need to talk about to say that, oh, I can use Poisson in this case. Because remember, the expected value is the mean number of stings per week that gives us the average, and Poisson is also based on an average probability. All right, one more example in the next video if you are going to take a look at it. Um, not get on to some other problems, but there's good stuff to be had in that video as well. I'd recommend it.